we'll be looking at the weapons now. Now, we were announced that they will be changing bunkle raids. The bunkle raids will be now be jumping from 6 to 18. Big jump. Big no It's already... Now, first off, they need to change the mechanics of the raids. I swear, if I join Carbuncle and I join that Whale Summon and I see 90% defense up every two seconds, I'm going to lose my mind. So hopefully they change the bunkle raids so it's only one trigger. So don't get me started on that wind raid with the reflect that kills you. Oh, you better change that side game. You better, you better change because I hate that. So please, I beg you, please change the raids. One trigger, that's it. Very important. I hope they, I hope they keep that in mind because having multiple triggers in that raid does hurt a bit. So I, I, I have to throw that rant out because it's very important that they do not forget that the bunker raids do have annoying triggers and having 18 people run into the raid, one punching it, activating triggers over and over, it's a problem. So now what we're going to be looking at are the new weapons. Each LED gets one weapon. Now we're looking at the fire weapon here. Now you're probably looking at this weapon like what, what is all that? Now I'm going to read all the skills off to you, obviously, because I'm pretty sure a majority of people here do not speak Japanese, myself included, but there was a paste bin and it was translated for us. So I will be going through them. Now for the fire weapon, it's a medium boost to a midi and attack up based on number of epics. The Amity boost is the first skill as the epic attack boost is the second skill. Now you're probably wondering what's an epic, right? And we're gonna go look at it really quick. So if you're gonna go to menu, you're gonna go to shop, right? Go to treasure trade. And then you go to quest items and weapons. And weapons, they give you, oh my gosh, Shiro, if you don't shut up. Now, um, in this, they give you like names for each weapon. You got your Hollow Sky, your Dark Opus, your Beast, Primal, Rose, Cosmos. And in this little corner here, you have Epic Weapons. If you click on Epic Weapons, it's gonna bring up your Epic Weapons choices. You may notice that the Epic Weapons are the weapons that drop from the Bunko Raids. Now, for this grid, you would get an attack boost based on how many Fire of Prometheus you have in your grid. If you didn't know what Fire Prometheus does, it's an actual dual mod attack. So it gives you two attacks boost. It gives you a big boost attack and also gives you a medium boost attack and double rate, which is actually very, very good weapon right there. Now, if they were to, I don't believe they are four star in this weapon. So keep that in mind, this is still a three star weapon. But one thing you have to take note of is the take damage every turn. This actually stacks, I believe. I, I can't. I'm pretty sure it stacks. I could be wrong. Leave it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it stacks. Now, with this skill stacking, this is going to be a big, 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 big problem because fire in its current state has a huge issue with healing. Right now, fire healing is not strong enough, right? There's no amazing healer in the fire element right now. In terms of, in terms of healers, your, your options are not that vast. You have a Null as a healer, you have Yule as a healer. There's really not like an amazing healer in fire. So when you start stacking multiple of the fire Prometheus, you can, let's say you run three, right? That would be 2,400 damage every turn. Now, unless your grid has where you have, let's say uh, 30K health, 2,400 is quite a bit of health, right? So. Because this weapon does not give health either, this weapon does not give health, neither does the uh, neither does the uh, weapon, the new weapon coming out, you may not have 30k HP to really support this weapon. So practicality wise may be hard on fire currently to run this grid of like say three epics and the new weapon because you just don't have enough health, right? You're gonna be taking so much damage and oh, this, this song is annoying. Oh my God. Who listened to this? What? Turn it down. <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> but um, turn it off actually. <laughs> this is giving me a headache. <laughs> but um, 
the weapon grid may be too taxing on most players, especially not high rank players, because if you didn't know, you do get a HP boost based on your rank. So just know that while this may look really good on paper, practical wise, it may be a problem because of the damage you're taking. So with the epic grid for fire, you, it's going to take time. Um, it'd probably be good for small raids and raids you don't take damage in, but you just got to be paid attention to this because it can be a really strong problem in the future. Oh my god, if I if I have to hear that song one more time. Oh, do we have a, you know, you know what, I think I have most of the weapons, right? Don't I have most of them? <laughs> can we, <laughs> can we just go, let's talk about the next weapon, okay? So the next weapon is the water weapon, right? Now this weapon is actually a little bit different, but it's going to be a stamina large, right? So keep that in mind, stamina large is the same stamina on on Varna the uh, Fenrir bow. Now, I don't know if these weapons will have a four star. I don't believe so. So while it may have stamina large, I don't know if they have a four star. I cannot confirm, I do not know. But just know that it's gonna have stamina large, which is the same thing that's on, on uh, the Fenrir bow, and it's the passive. And they multi-attack up based on the number of staffs and grid. Now, this is a big thing, right? So let's take a look at the staff options in water, right? Uh, all right, so, so now these are the staff, the staff options in water. You already have an instant staff option in your traffic weapon. Most people, you have to run your traffic weapon, right? So that's already one staff weapon. Now, the Opus is another staff weapon that you generally have to run in your grid, um, provided you have access to the weapon. So that's another weapon that's pretty much mandatory at this point. <laughs> and then we have options, right? The Zeno, so you have two options with the Zeno. You have the, either the Harp or the Staff. Most people are probably gonna run the Staff because it's the older weapon. So that's already will put you at three weapons. Keep in mind that the weapon itself for water is Staff. That would be a fourth weapon. Now, if you're Primal, depending on things, you can also run this Magna 2 Staff if you're running a Staff Comp. But if you were running the staff comp, you would also run the Akasa staff, being a fifth staff and a sixth staff. So already over half of your grid is a staff grid. So it actually could be a really big multi-attack boost based on that weapon alone. I don't know the numbers, obviously, because the weapon's not out, but it's giving you an idea of just the possibility of what you can do with current grids and I'm not even talking about the balls in the grid either. So just giving you a, the idea where like staff, a staff grid can, your, your whole grid can possibly be a staff. We haven't mentioned the Ultima, right? The Ultima staff is also another option being weapon number seven. So just keep that in mind that that's actually a feasible grid of just pure staff weapons. But you would have to remember that the Fenrir bow is not a staff and it's probably one of the most may it may be power creep with this weapon because they both get the same skill but i don't know if the weapon's a four star or not it's very important that we find out in the future and when i do i'll make a video on it the next weapon we'll be looking at is the earth weapon now the earth weapon is uh what is it it's earth attack a uh, earth character skill cap up and attack up and damage up when one of each weapon type in the game is equipped in grid now i believe that's a kime grid if you haven't known the kime grid is a very very popular build right now where you run one of each weapon i'll give you an idea of it let's look take a look at the earth grid right so let's go look at earth so this is what a, a kime grid would look like um, so let's remove these, let's remove these real quick, hold up. Uh, I'll change it back later, but go with that. Mm. Okay.
Huh. Um, this is probably not optimal. I'm just throwing weapons in here at this at this point, just to give you guys an idea what the grid would look like, right? So, we just throw this in there. I'm curious. Um, so this, so this would be an example of like what a time grid would look like, right? So you would have ten different weapons in the grid. Obviously, this weapon right now would take up a slot, so this slot right here would be pretty much removed. Let's remove that, like from this party. So you would put the weapon in here and you would gain attack up and damage up. A, a damage cap up and attack up when you have 10 weapons in your grid. I could be wrong on this. Um, the character skill cap up, I don't know how I feel about that as most of Earth units, they don't really, you know, for all skill damage, an Earth biggest attacker right now being Octo has zero damage skills. So I don't know how that's gonna be in the future, but, um. I really, I really don't know how I feel about this weapon right now. The fact that it's already giving a Kime Grid type feel, this is already a meta in Earth if you have the Oracle being Kime. So, it already works perfectly fine and it does take up another slot and you get more damage cap up. But the fact that it does not give an attack boost in itself, right, can also hamper it if the attack boost from the second skill is not strong enough. So. I just want to throw that out there. It could be really good, or it could be very mediocre. I'm not sure. We have to wait until the to, until the uh, until the uh, weapon comes out before we can decide. And now we'll be looking at the next weapon, the wind weapon. So the wind weapon actually kind of similar to the fire weapon. Now the wind weapon will be giving. Wind attack up medium, which is okay. Wind attack up medium, preferably it would have been large, but you know, at least it gives attack up, right? But it also gives attack up based on the number of weapons, of uh, epic weapons in the grid. Now, as I mentioned, the epic weapon for the the raid, it's at the habit here, so we can just look at it really quickly. So we're gonna look at it. I don't want to go back to that t until the uh, <laughs> that menu theme it gives me a headache. So we're, I believe it's a dagger, right? Yeah, yeah. So this this is the dagger we're talking about here. So depending on how many of these you have in your grid, you would gain more attack up. Now this is a multi-attack boosting weapon. So there is a point where you hit a happy medium where you ha you either max out on the 50% multi-attack. Now this can also be a problem because keep in mind that with Zeth getting a four star. Each of these will be giving a higher boost to the multi cap, the, the multi attack, and the multi attack cap is 50 on your grid. So it can be a problem, or it could be very, it could be either very good or very bad. Um, just know you also lose 10% health per um, dagger in your grid, but I wouldn't worry about too much because you know you're going to have a ton of health. <laughs> a lot of these primal builds have going to have so much health that I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even worry about it much, but it could be a problem. I don't know how it's going to go. Cause I, we don't know the numbers on it. It really depends on how strong that passive skill. The second skill really is with a lot of epics in your grid. I could, I could see people running three of these in grid. I can see it, but I don't know if it will be a uh, viable option. Um, this is probably a more free to play build as well because you know three the weapons in the grid plus the one weapon the new weapon the bow That's already four weapons the opus seraphic Zeno like it, it could be free to play friendly. So I would look out for this weapon in the future um, I don't know if it'll be enough to beat magna to wind in current state, but who knows? We'll see the numbers in the future Now We'll be looking at the light weapon now the light weapon um the translation on it is a little bit weird so I'll, i'm gonna read what they've said on it um this could be wrong I, I, it's, it's from the pace of bend so just don't hold it too hard yet against me so i'll read it attack up based on number of epic weapons in grid and that's all it says now i don't know what the first skill is because so I'll, I'll i'll bring you a little picture of it right this this is what it is right here so I don't know what the first skill is exactly, so 
if anyone can leave a comment on the uh, the video and talk more about the first scale, we can have a conversation there and talk about it. But if we're talking about light epic weapons, the light epic weapon actually Hector Bow. I don't know if this account has it though. Let me check. Hector Bow is a stamina weapon that gives large stamina and double attack rate up, I believe. Um, let me check though. It may not be here. Okay, never mind. It is here. So this is the Hector Bow. Now, this weapon's actually not that bad, but keep in mind it already has the uh, skill level 10 problem. This is a, this is gonna be a big problem with the primal builds, right? The free to play primal builds. Like you're gonna be having a lot of skill level 10 weapons in your grid, and that doesn't matter in the long run. So you will get an attack boost with the fist based on how many you do have in your grid. And you do get the, the double attack rate boost, which is okay. Um, it's not that great, but it really depends on how strong the attack boost is for having multiple of these in your grid, where if it's a big enough boost, that alone can carry out the normal modifier that you'll be losing out on. Cause it has, it's a normal modifier, right? So if it carries that portion of your damage, then having additional modifiers going in your grid is a very good thing and you can really hit high damage amounts. But I really don't know about that first skill. I'm sorry. If you have any questions, if you know it, then please leave it in the comments and we'll talk about it there and I'll try to comment on my thoughts on it. So, just want to throw that out there. Now, for the last weapon, and probably the weapon with the most potential, the Dark Staff. Now, this one is really, 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 really strong. It's a Kime Grid weapon for Dark. That's all I gotta say. Dark is probably the weapon, the element with the most potential weapons of different elements that are really, really good. It even surpasses Earth in terms of the Kime Grid. So we're gonna take a look at a potential uh, Kime Grid for Dark. Let's see if I can I have a Dark Party lane around here. I don't, have, I don't know if I have a party or not. I think I do, I think I do. Let me check if I have one for Dark lane around here. Nani, Dark, 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 there you go, oh, cool, so Dark. So this this be an example of a Kime Grid, right? So currently this is the grid right now for dark. What you would really change here is probably remove one and fall on the sword. Um, hold up. Mm, put a Gisla. Um, I don't know if Gisla is the best option, right? Um, there's, there's plenty of weapons options you can really go with. You may want to change out the Celeste Claw because um, it's the Kime Grid. Uh, you may want to put in now depending on the team you, it depends if you need multi-attack or not I don't know right if you need multi-attack or not so if you need multi-attack you have a para there's like there's so many good weapons options for dark and that's like this is already like 10 weapons right this is not even including the weapon right like you don't, technically don't need a Gisela right you can just remove the, the Gisela and the Gisela can be the place of the new weapon right so this in itself right here is a con grid. Perfect, quick, quick and easy, right? Now, a lot of these weapons are also pay to win, right? Keep that in mind, like what's that four, that four grand weapons right there? One, two, three, four. But you have options, right? You have, as I mentioned, you have the Gisela. If you, that's another weapon you have to bar up though. You have um, Akasha, to, uh, like depending on you, like if you're running a team of the same weapon type, you can run the Akasha type for it. You can also run the, uh, the Ultima type for it. You have a lot of options when it comes to that stuff. You can run Zeno. Uh, this grid is running Kirin, but you can also run Zeno, the Zeno the Diablo weapon as well. So Dark has a ton of weapon options. So it having access to a Kime grid, that in itself alone is more than enough to put it ahead of most Ellie's. And Dark will be a 1 million hitting Ellie easily. Like it, it already can hit 1 million autos. So now it's gonna be hitting 1 million autos like with no effort, so. This is a really big thing. Big, big, big for Dark. Um, the weapon is probably the most important weapon out of the, the six mentioned here. This weapon is probably the most important, so. This video is already like getting extremely long, it's like 35 minutes in. But um, that's my opinion on this. If you have any question, um, leave it in the comments. I'll probably have to like split up the video where I have to like 
timestamp everything. So, thank you guys for watching. It was, it was a long talk. Um, hopefully, this answers a lot of questions. And uh, please tell me things you have any questions about. And we could talk more and have discussion in the, the uh, comments. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.